to the temple at the top, except I happened to be, speaking of pregnant, I was pregnant at the time, and I couldn't stand going in a claustrophobic <laughs> space like that. So my husband went in there without me, took a picture and came back out. <laughs> but Brian Forster looked at that pyramid, and he said, look at the stones here, the, the very bottom ones were the huge ones where they were un uneven shaped, but very smooth, and you couldn't put a piece of paper in between them. And then on top of it were these other stones that were much rougher, and it was interesting what they, they put mortar. They put mortar with pebbles in it. It was very decorative, but it was entirely different than the bottom rows, which means they came upon a site, an ancient site, and built on top of it. You will find ancient peoples did this because when they come upon a site, they know it's at a conjunction of what we call ley lines, which are energy lines. We have meridians in our body that they, the Chinese know about with their acupuncture. The planet Mother Earth has meridians in her body, and they're called ley lines. And when you come to a juncture, and it's not just this, sometimes it's eight or more all conjuncting this spot, that's a power point. So like the Great Pyramid of Egypt, I think, is on the biggest conjunction in the whole planet. Stonehenge is on another one. And they're in a belt going around the planet. They are interconnected. This is why, this can explain why you have cultures that never met that did the same things, which is just baffling. The poor archaeologists like, there's no way they saw each other. <laughs> and if they did, they couldn't talk. <laughs> but if they're these ley lines, the shaman goes to sleep on each end, they have a nice conversation in spirit. It's spirit language. There's no language barrier. And they share ideas. This is how you build a pyramid. Or this is how you write your stones. This is how you walk your stones. Then we did medicine <laughs> wheels and nature spirits. A medicine wheel is stones, but they're not big ones. And it's laid out. It's a calendar. It's a calendar. Instead of being eight, it's got 12. And it's, it's like the wheel of the year. There's an animal associated with each one. And they also have um, the sweat lodge, which we didn't call it sweat lodge, because I did some time with a women's group. And I looked at what I learned from the Native Americans as like an outrigger on a canoe. Because I had my own path. And this isn't my path, but this keeps me from straying too far here, because it's parallel. Then we have Lemuria and her descendants. That was our most recent class. Lemuria was supposed to be like Atlantis. It was a continent that sank down into the sea. And the geologists, the scientists, they always take, you know, take our, our wonderful fun and say, nah, never happened, never happened. There's no evidence on the bottom of the seabed. Well, so what do you do? If the island did sink, there's always refugees, right? They would have gone out in all directions. So I looked at all the cultures around the edge of where that was supposed to be. One corner is at Easter Island. Talk about weirdness. They got these big statues there with a hat on the top. The hat weighs a ton. How did they get it up there? How did they move those things? Why did they do that? How is interesting, but why to me is more interesting. What were they trying to do? They were discovered in the 18th century, I think, by a European. And unfortunately, the Europeans knocked a bunch of them over and stuff like that. But they have been restoring them, and they've been digging and finding more. They used to have inlaid eyes. And this is interesting. They weren't facing outward. They were facing towards the center of their little island, and the eyes were looking up. What were they looking at? It's like the Great Sphinx. What's it looking at? There is a line of sight to Mount Sinai, by the way, from the Great Sphinx. But we have no idea what they call the Moai. We have no idea what the Moai we're looking at. So, what is next? Coming up in July, it's July 20th, we're going to compare the two books of the dead, Tibetan and Egyptian. They're very different. One has to do with the reincarnation cycle, and how do you go through it, and how do you come right back, and how do you promote yourself. The other one? The Egyptians didn't want to come back, and they figured Egypt was so good, heaven has to be just like Egypt. They wanted to go there and stay there. August, we're going to talk about Hindu goddesses. Why so many? 
the Hindus, they have over 2,000 gods. I spoke to a Hindu once, and he said, oh, yeah, man, there's no way I know all of them. <laughs> and they have the god of pizza. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> if not, there should be. I'm sure they, you know, they'll make one for you. Oh, good. They, they, took, they took Jesus Christ and turned him into a god. Oh, Krishna. So, yes, yes. Um, in September, we're going to look at the pagan origins behind Christianity. We have a lot of stuff in the Bible that actually comes from somewhere else. And what is it? And what, where is it coming from? And what is it? What is it teaching us? Uh, in October, we're going to look at magic. We're going to look specifically at Jewish and Greek.